and welcome to the 2018 New York International Auto Show. I'm Kristen Lee with Jalopnik, and here today with me is Frederick Osbo. And we're going to take a walk around the Rockstar Energy Drink next entire Toyota Corolla hatchback drift car. Very, very exciting. I was told this morning that it has over a thousand horsepower and it has nitrous? Correct. Okay, well, let's actually, can we open up this hood and see what's underneath? Absolutely. This is it. Okay, what am I, what am I looking at? So you asked about nitrous. This is the nitrous right here. So we have four nozzles, one per runner. So this is full on real life Fast and the Furious <laughs> style. But it, it's not, uh, it's all pre-programmed. So yeah. we don't have switches or anything like that for nitrous. It's just engaged when I need it. Mm -hmm. So all I do is drive the thing. Uh, when I hit more than 70% gas, the nitrous engages. Oh, you and don't even have to do it. It's just oh, It just it's happens automatically. automatically. But that's when all hell breaks loose and you get fireballs out of the hood through this wastegate. You know, it, it's it's a crazy machine and to be able to push a thousand horsepower from what what is essentially a quite small engine. This particular motor comes in, um, you know, various Toyota models. This one we have uh, developed because it was in the Scion TC we ran previously. Oh, okay. Um, so, it starts off as a 2.5 factory block and then the Papadakis Racing Boys, they take everything apart they mill out the entire block, put, put in crazy sleeves, redesign the whole inside of the cylinder head. They run high compression, tons of boost, and tons of nitrous. Oh my god, and fat turbos too. Fat turbos, for sure. We have a quite wide workable RPM uh, range. I want to say 4,500 to 9,000. This red line's at 9,000 RPM. Yeah. What compression ratio are you running? 10 and a half, 2.2 bars of boost, and nitrous on top. So the motor basically tries to push the cylinder head off the motor. <laughs> yeah. So Steph and the boys have they've spent a lot of time figuring out how to keep everything together. Okay. Welcome to my office. It's a very nice office. It's very spacious. It's bigger than my apartment in here. Yeah, it's not a whole lot going on in here. You know, almost everything is ripped out. It's down to the bare essentials. And that would be steering wheel, pedals, e-brake, shifter. Sequential? We actually do not run a sequential. A lot of guys do, but we've stuck with the NASCAR style four speed. Oh, okay. And I, I believe you can shift just as quick because you have one gear in each corner. So how much input did you have with building this car? I want to say a lot. So Steph has been, Steph and I have been working together for seven years now, and it's been a, a gradual uh, process of getting to know each other, getting to know each other's style, stuff like that. So with this car, they're pretty much on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Like they know what I like, they know what I don't like. We have a list of ideas that we wanted to improve following last year. And then they knocked it out of the park. You know, they made it happen. All right, well, that has been awesome. And I want to thank you for your time today. And, thank uh, you. Your first round is going to happen soon, right? Long Beach? Absolutely. Long Beach coming up. Pretty excited to be behind the wheel of this uh, badass creation. And uh, thanks for watching. With me now is Stefan Papadakis, the man who's responsible for making this awesome drift car. So, Stefan, um, what went into this? So did Toyota just give you this Corolla hatchback and you're like, all right, tear it all down and build it all back up? What was the process like? Pretty much. So this car is a pre-production car. We got this car so early in its development that it was one of two that landed here in the U.S. So one is the car actually behind me on the turntable, the blue car, and the other one they gave to us to turn into the drift car. So we actually strip it all the way back down to where it's just the bare shell and we chemical dip it to get all of the paint undercoating everything off so where it's just a raw unibody. We put it on a frame jig and then we start doing all the fabrication with the cage and the tunnel for the rear wheel drive conversion, put the thousand horsepower engine into it and uh, all the drift specific suspension where it has you know, 60 degrees, 62 degrees of steering angle. You can't just build a drift car by throwing a thousand horsepower into a car and then expecting it to drift well. So what else have you done to make it withstand all that power, make it a good drift car, hopefully a champion? The core of what we do is we need to put all the safety equipment into it. So it's all the roll cage, 
and when we do the roll cage, we're actually stiffening up the chassis as well, because this car is made to be front wheel drive, but when it's rear wheel drive, it wants to twist up a lot more than factory, so we actually add some bracing into the chassis so it doesn't want to twist up. Or like, if you get a Mustang or a Corvette, they're essentially drift cars off the lot, right? You can drive it off the dealer a lot, and you can go do donuts and maybe drift it around a little bit. The front wheel drive, it requires a full a redesign. Oh, you really had your work cut out for you because this thing came out of the box as a front wheel drive car. You have to like redo the entire underside of it. Yeah, so that's, it work. I mean, that's our expertise. Uh, the suspension is totally redone. Um, with the rules, we have to use the factory cross member, but we're able to modify it for a different steering rack in the front and then to hold the, the rear end uh, in, in the rear. We actually use the late model Supra rear end and axles. Oh. Like a Jay-Z 80 oh, okay. Mark IV Supra. I was gonna say the one with the two Jay-Z? Yep, Yeah, exactly. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then all the suspension is custom. So in the rear, obviously it just rolls along on a front wheel drive car, but we have to put provisions for the axles and everything into it and also have the geometry uh, that works well for drift. So we actually build these billet uprights okay. and then all custom trailing arm and all the control arms are all one-off components specifically for this drift car. Designs that we've yeah. kind of learned in the past uh -huh. and then we, we design them specifically for this particular build. And then the front for all the steering, we need to get a whole bunch of steering out of it and have we, we have specific caster and um, trail. These are like uh, the geometry that we want for the steering when it steers. Uh, that's all specific for drift. A lot different than what you'd have in like a, a road race car. Right. Because when we go around a, a left-hand turn, we're actually steering to the right. So yes. there's, a, there's, there's a lot of geometry and, and knowledge in these drift car builds that's very different than what you can learn in books and traditional motorsports. Mm -hmm. We obviously start with the stock car, but in order to have this thing drift very well, we want it to be a lot wider than stock. There's specific uh, track widths that we want, and we run a much larger tire. This is a 275, 40, 18 uh, Nexon tire on the back of it. So it's much larger than, than anything that's built for it. So a couple of things. So we make the car a lot wider, and we also want to make it so the car is easily repairable if it gets into, uh, you know, crashes with other cars or whatever. So we actually cut a lot of the factory sheet metal apart off, and this whole fender here is all carbon fiber, and it's all one piece. It looks like it's two piece, but it's actually one. Wow. Yep. Oh, this is hard to fix if this gets... We just would actually unrivet this. Uh -huh. The whole part comes off, and we can put on a whole new fender. Oh, wow. Yep. Um, and it's factory rear bumper, because we actually like the looks of the, the front <laughs> and rear bumper, so it yep. integrates into it. Awesome, and I see you've cut a hole in here for... Tire smoke. Tire smoke, yep. just for that. Yeah, and these cars have so much power now, and they're yeah. smoking the tires. Um, it just looks cool if you got smoke coming out of body components like that. I mean, that. I think that's awesome. That's a great touch. I think there's only one last thing to do, and that is to add the Lucky Jalopnik bump. I've never liked orange and yellow together, but maybe if we did, like, right here. Is that good? Are we happy about that? Go for it. Yeah, yeah. commit. And there it is. A little bubble, but there, this will bring you luck.